it's kind of a hybrid book. It's uh, sort of funny existential angst, and it's also a compendium of useless, fascinating information. Um, there are two main characters, Tess and Jude, and they do a lot of Google traveling. So they, uh, they just go on Google Maps and find places that they think look interesting, and then they look up everything they want to know about them on Wikipedia. But they don't really get out much. So uh, I'm going to read a bit that is one of these um, sort of encyclopedic sections. These American small towns are like episodes of The Young and the Restless. Once you've seen one, you've seen them all. But it never got dull. We'd stay up late in front of the screen, roaming the streets of Edmond or spying on downtown Oklahoma via the webcam on the city hall roof, going into raptures every time a passerby appeared in the frame. It wasn't exactly that we despised ordinary cities, Rochester, Cape Breton Regional Municipality, Harrisburg, or any of those other charmless functional agglomerations you only ever hear about on the sports channels. The Washington Nationals have called up outfielder Manolo Perez from their minor league team, Harrisburg, but we did have a particular predilection for places with stupid names. As soon as we caught, saw one that caught our attention, we'd stop there and spend some time wandering the main streets. Next, we'd go and ask Wikipedia everything there was to know about the place. Most of the time, there wasn't much to say. Chocolate Bayou in Texas has the nerve to call itself that without any explanation as to why. The same thing for Scissors and Ugly, but every once in a while, we'd come across a fantastic story. Here's an example. At the beginning of the 50s, the radio program Truth or Consequences was one of the most popular in the United States. One day, the host, Ralph Edwards, announced that the program would be broadcast from the first town that agreed to change its name to Truth or Consequences, the town of Hot Springs, New Mexico, so-called because of the many thermal springs in the surrounding area, took up the challenge and is today called Truth or Consequences. As promised, Mr. Edwards and his team moved in and set up shop there. This story, which was told in a 1997 film, inspired the smartasses at Half.com, a virtual garage sale site. In 2000, they managed to convince the municipal council of Halfway, a small Oregon village of 345 residents, to change its name to Half.com, all in return for a few trinkets, 20 or so computers for the local primary school, a free website, that kind of thing. We were talking about how to get the company on the map, and we said, why don't we get on the map, literally? declared the site's founder, Josh Kopelman, proud of his stunt. In 1886, when the town of Climax, Minnesota was established, it was given, without any ulterior motive, the name of its main employer, a chewing tobacco manufacturer. Nobody could have predicted that the word Climax would one day become synonymous with orgasm in everyday language. Once the harm had been done, the only option for the town's 243 inhabitants was to pretend that nothing was up, which didn't always work out too well. Take, for example, the day in 2004 when the high school principal sent a student home for contravening, according to her, the school's dress code, by wearing a T-shirt printed with a message with sexual connotations. She didn't know that the phrase in question was quite simply the town's new slogan, climax more than just a feeling, <laughs> which had come out on top in a local contest. Among the other finalists, other suggestions included no end to climax, and bring a friend to Climax. <laughs> in Arizona, there's a place called Y. Why? Well, to start off with, the town was known by the letter Y because routes 85 and 86 joined up there making a Y shape. However, Arizona law stipulates that town names must have a minimum of, th of three letters, so the town councillors were requested to comply without delay. After some discussion, they opted for Y, W-H-Y which of course sounds the same as the letter Y. Let's just point out for the record that the route of these two roads has been changed today and the junction looks like a T. <laughs> At the beginning of the 19th century, most of what is today the state of Michigan was inhabited by the Potawatomi tribe. Towards the end of the 1830s, the first white settlers arrived and by 1840, they were sufficiently numerous to justify constructing a school, the area around which quickly became built up. George Reeves, the owner of both the general store and a distillery, was considered the founder of this town. So it was to him that the authorities went to ask for an official place name. You can name it hell for all I care, came the response. 
On October the 13th, 1841, the town was officially named Hell. <laughs> Chicken, Alaska started out as a mining camp that for the first century of, of its existence had no official name and was none the worse for it. When they built a post office there in 1902, the US Postal Service informed the population, 37 people spread over six households according to the last census, that their tiny backwater would have to be christened in order for mail to be delivered there. As there were a lot of ptarmigans in the area, they decided to call the place ptarmigan. However, at the time of completing the incorporation request, nobody could agree on the spelling of the word. In desperation, the mayor asked if anyone could suggest a different bird name. Chicken was the first suggestion heard, and as everyone was in a rush to get the chore over with and go home, chicken it was. This next one is the best. In 1869, the inhabitants of a small Texas colony decided to incorporate and demanded a post office from the US Postal Service. Unfortunately, the name they'd chosen for their town was rejected. We don't know what this name was, nor the reasons for its rejection. The councillors of the future nameless, somewhat irritated, nevertheless yielded to this decision and submitted another name, which was also rejected. This was a little harder to swallow, but they didn't let it get them down. They brainstormed once more and submitted a third name, which just like the first two failed to please the post office bureaucrats. This circus was repeated no less than six times. After the sixth rejection, the good colonists jokingly returned the form with the following inscription, let the post office be nameless and damned. They were taken at their word, and in 1880, the town was registered with the name of nameless. <clears throat> what I want to know is, what were the six rejected names? What could Merita know when they said yes to coupon, elephant, unicorn, comfort, finger, frog jump, defeated, double trouble, good intent, love ladies, perfection, purchase, burnt chimney corner, duck, elf, hair town, lower pig pen, upper pig pen, meat camp, Othello, poor town, pope crossing, spies, brilliant, coolville, dull, Liar's Corner, Loveland, PP, America, Box, Cement, Chance, Frogville, OK, Pink, Poop Creek, Remote, Sweet Home, Dynamite, Index, Triangle, Zaza, Domestic, New Discovery, Ginseng, Hell for certain, hippo, King Arthur's court, Satan's kingdom, Krypton, lovely, miracle, normal, and ordinary. <laughs>